Welcome to the Wealthy Wednesday Show. I am your host, Lucy McMonagle. Women are recreating the rules for business, leadership, money, and they are changing the world in the process. Each week, join me for empowering messages and interviews that will inspire, motivate, and transform you. Giving a special shout out to Gordon Weary for creating the custom music that you are listening to now. Now, let's get started. Hey guys, welcome to the Mission Mojo Show. This is Nicola Grace, the Mission Mentor, helping you clarify and monetize your life's big mission and purpose so that you can make a big difference, make the money you deserve, and leave a legacy. And I'm joined with a client today called Lucy McMonagall, who's like really amazing and she's got some awesome things we're going to be talking about regards this idea of being able to manifest money and magical um, money manifestations is her new book. She's going to talk a little bit about what's in that today. So firstly, let's say hi to Lucy. Hi, Lucy. Hello. Hey, everybody um, who's joining us as well. So, um, Lucy, just in a moment, I'll get you to talk a little bit about yourself. But first, we'll just do a bit of housekeeping. For those of you watching live, there's a comment section underneath. We'd love for you to say hi so we know who's here. And feel free to ask questions because we are going to get into some Q&A time towards the end. If you're struggling with anything right now, if you're trying to bring more money into your life and you've got blocks and what have you, you know, let's share it with us oh hey Sajada hi Sajada's here early bird yay and then uh who else is here um let me go through the agenda and then I'm gonna hand it over to Lucy and we're gonna have a great chat oh hey Sue nice to see you great anybody else joining us late for those of you watching the replay please tag us in the comment section so we can get back to your questions as well. So let's go. So the first thing that we're going to talk about, is Lucy's going to give you a bit of a background about how she came from a really tricky situation in her life to, to where she is now and being able to um, perform these magical money manifestations. And then we're going to talk about the big bad B word. Oh, where is that? The big bad B word. What is that? And why shouldn't you uh, uh, and what do you need to know about it rather then we're going to talk about increasing the inner hunger and the why and why do you need to be hungry for I don't know what she's going to say there but we'll soon find out then we'll talk specifically about what magical money manifestations is how it works and Lucy's going to do some uh, perform this really amazing cool thing that she does which is off the charts amazing um, new people, I'm seeing you join. Love for you to say hi. And then we're going to talk about the 21 days to magical money manifestations that Lucy has as a free gift for you. And then we'll open up for Q&A. So again, Q&A is all about just exposing what you're prepared to expose on Facebook publicly about where, where you're coming up against obstacles in your uh, desire to make the money that you want. So Lucy, talk a little bit about your background. And, and just to give you a brief history, guys, I met Lucy being interviewed by her in her Wealthy Wednesday show. And then she decided she wanted to work with me in my Right Mission, Right Money program and has become a VIP because she's birthing new work and she's going into uh, positioning and branding herself in a whole new way. And uh, and then when her book was coming out, I says, oh, wow, you need to pass some of these tips on to my peeps. So that's why we're here. So, Lucy, talk a little bit about how you man how how you got to where you are talking about what you're talking about now. Thank you, Nicola. I really appreciate that. And for me, the the book that that I am birthing, the magical money manifestations, it is basically my my life's work. It is how I went from extremely dirt poor to very wealthy, but also more importantly, I noticed when my clients were bumping up against the same issues that I once bumped up against over and over again. So I've it's written twofold. One, because of my own life history. And two, the things that I've overcome, I've been able to help my clients with. And I put this in the book because I really want to make a global impact. And for the first year of the publication, I'm going to be contributing 30% of the proceeds the net profit proceeds to women entrepreneurs. 
Beautiful. So that's an inspiring story to go from where the brain patterning in your family was in you and, you know, you were you were in poverty to actually break through and create wealth. Because I, I come from a middle class family and we were really relatively well off. So mm -hmm. it's been relatively easy for me to make money. But then I've re as I've wanted to make more and more and get more and more leverage, that's where I start coming up against the barriers. So it doesn't matter where people are at financially, there's always blocks and barriers um, to where that next level uh, of success and financially is for us. So what, what do you think was the big turning point for you that really started you uh, making, getting momentum on building progress so that you were making, you know, you had more and more money flow? So my biggest turning point was when I opened up my cabinet in my kitchen and I realized that I was nearly out of the crackers that I was eating because my son started going from breast milk to eating salads. And so I had to make a choice every single day of feeding myself crackers, not eating or feeding my son. And that crushed me. Wow. That turning point of really sometimes I honestly felt like I wanted to eat his food and I would beat myself up because I never let him go hungry. That just wanted to make sure I was really, really thin back then too. And I finally made a decision, which is the very first step on any type of, of, of anything on where you want to go is you have to make a decision. And I made a vow that I would figure out a way to get out of this misery, this desperation and this poverty if it killed me. And that was strong enough to, to loosen up some very ingrained belief systems that I had, very ingrained thought patterns that my family had because I grew up extremely poor and we were on welfare and we were on public assistance and public food. And I fell between the gaps. I made too much money for assistance on one level, but I didn't make enough to to pay rent and feed food. And so it was always this balance. That was my turning point. Wow. And so what did you do after you made the decision for things to start coming toward you? Because you like knowing you and being working with you, you know, having, you know, being a client and now becoming a friend and a colleague, <laughs> um, you, you have this ability, creative power, and, and you do really freaky stuff. That's really yes. quite amazing. So ha, ha, like, how do we join all of those dots together? So after the, the next thing I started doing was I started looking for ways on how to legally make money. I want. I just wanted to phrase that it was legal that I made money because there was, when you're impoverished, you have a lot of options, especially if you're a pretty young girl. Mm -hmm. And some of the options were ones that I was not willing to partake in that, that weren't legal. So I started to just do anything I could. I, I started asking my friends and people that I knew a do you need somebody to do errands? Uh, can I wash your laundry? Can I just anything? I've sold my dishes. <laughs> I've, I've washed people's cars. I've ran errands. And then that led me into healthcare where I started bringing people to doctor's appointments. Mm -hmm. And then I would start taking care of them and being a companion. So that brought me into a full-time position in home health care for a family, which Beautiful. was really powerful. Which was the beginning, right? And from there, yeah. lots yeah. of other stuff started yeah. to happen. And now here you are uh, in, independently, you know, supporting yourself. Yeah. So that's a really powerful because uh, the mindset is um, – I will do whatever it takes within the boundaries of legal, moral, and ethical. Yeah? Correct. Whatever yes. And and I did make a promise to myself that I would never let greed rule my life. Nice. And so I ha I felt like I had enough ethics and and those are important those were important to me. 
That's great. That's really awesome. Really inspiring because I know sometimes people get stuck in their generational um, circumstances like this is, you know, my family lived this way and so therefore I live this way, but you've broken out of the generation. So before we start talking about the big bad B word, what, because I know you do generational clearings, right? You help a lot of people get past that generational clearing because you've done it yourself. Yes. So how much of an impact do our parents and their, their parents and their parents have on us in terms of how much money we're able to manifest? I, I, in my personal opinion, I believe that it has at least 80, I, I want to say 90%, but to be on the safe side, I would say 80%. 80%. For, That's a lot. Yes, yeah. it is. Because in addition to me making the decision, looking for ways to make more money, I also was led to the Inner Peace Foundation and individuals who were doing psychic readings and clearings and, and all that strange stuff, as I used to call it back then. And I, I got a clearing, and it was when I got that clearing, all of the other stuff started to fall into place. Yeah. Yeah. And I find that with me too, like on my journey, every step, step, step of the way I've worked with practitioners to help me clear what's not, what's not in alignment um, to the, to, you know, to the financial goals that I want. And so you, so it makes sense now that you would do generational clearings. Cause if you're yes. seeing that 80% of what people experience financially is in, is thinking and generational belief systems, um, we've inherited from our family, then that seems to be a big part of the work then, right? Yes. That's a yeah. huge part of the work. Cool. So if anybody's wanting to do generational clearings, you feel like, wow, 80%. Oh, that's a lot. Maybe that's what I need to do. We'll, we'll drop a link in the chat box later on um, for you to go and check out Lucy and talk to her about uh, getting some of that work done. But let's get to the big bad B word. Yes. Yes. <laughs> What's the big bad yes. B word? The big bad B word is setting boundaries. See, simple. It, yeah. it it sounds really simple and and when when you are having all of that programming that you're you're accustomed to it if you're accustomed to not being treated well when you start creating boundaries that really starts causing havoc on you and other people mm. Which is why people don't do it, right? Because they would rather they would rather keep it the peace than rock the boat. Yes, yeah, and that's but that means you don't have a peaceful financial situation, right? Mm -hmm. The boat's getting rocked somewhere, but you know, usually in your finances if you don't set boundaries. Yeah. That's true. That is so yeah. true. So, how did you start to set boundaries? <laughs> well, when I started in my early twenties, I was I was a little brash about it. <laughs> I lost a few friends <laughs> because I was like, I'm not going to tolerate this anymore. And, and I would get all excited. And and I was still working through on how to really work with my mindset and work with my emotions. And and so it was a, it was pretty messy when I started deciding what am I willing to tolerate and what am I willing not to accept in my life? Mm -hmm. And because where I grew up from, it's, it's pretty natural f for abuse and verbal abuse, mental abuse. You know, you don't want a big head. And and so I decided I'm not going to tolerate people talking to me in a derogatory sense. Mm -hmm. And so when I started bringing that up and it's like I would be a little brass about it. And sometimes I'd be a little more aggressive. And eventually I was able to start saying, hey, you know, I really understand where you're coming from. And I'd appreciate it if you don't do that anymore. Mm. So it, throughout the years, I've been able to make it more and more of a smooth transition. And once once you set a boundary, it's as if the universe wants to test you. So you right. will have like this person do tr cross the boundary. And then it, you you take care of it, and then you'll have the next person. It, it's like until you start having practiced over and over again, this is the boundary, you'll start bumping into those 
belief systems that is attracting those circumstances. And then once it no longer agitates you, once it no longer like does that emotional zap on you Mm -hmm. and you're able to um, unplug the triggers, then it doesn't happen anymore. Right. Yeah. And I see that it's like, you know, you, 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 the universe has been delivering you minestrone soup is how I've heard it. It's Mm -hmm. like, and they keep delivering you, you know, they, <laughs> it keeps delivering you minestrone soup, minestrone soup. And all of a sudden you want pumpkin soup. And you go, no, I want pumpkin soup now. I want a different experience. But you keep getting sent minestrone soup until you keep saying no to the minestrone soup and yes to the pumpkin soup, reminding them, I ordered pumpkin soup. I'm no longer interested in minestrone soup. Kind of like that. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. One of the things that I teach my clients and you as as well, although you are extremely disciplined, Lucy, so I haven't actually had to talk to you a lot about this. Um, and this is specifically for solopreneurs who are just starting up their business or, or female entrepreneurs, setting boundaries around your working time and when you do things during the week. Um, is really important for your financial flow in your business. So I see so many clients, uh, female clients particularly, who will go out to lunch with their girlfriend during the day and it'll be a couple of hours or they run errands during the day or they go to the dentist during the day or they go and, you know, they go and do something um, for their friends or their family during working hours, which is something that working women don't have the luxury of working women who work nine to five have to start at nine finish at five or you know a variation of and Mm -hmm. all of those other chores they do after hours or on the weekend and so that's one thing that you can do um if you are working from home is you set boundaries to say from nine to five on these days that i am home i'm going to work in my business because if you don't, then what happens is no momentum gets built and not enough momentum gets built for you for money to come in. How, how have you managed that that time for yourself? Like if you because I know you even went the other way and went into burnout. So how yeah. did you end up setting the, the boundary balance? For me, the, the way that I started setting the boundary boundary balance is I had to decide that my health and self-care was more important than ending up in the hospital <laughs> because right. I have had burnout because I would work seven days a week and I keep pushing myself and pushing myself and pushing myself until I just, I could not push myself any longer. Mm-hmm. And so I, I set certain times. I, I, I know what my body likes. Mm-hmm. And so I don't work a nine to five. I'm more of a um, 11 to seven person because that's the way that I, I work that I do my best time after between 11 and two. And then from two to seven, I'll, I'll, from two, I'll take like a half an hour lunch break. And I always make sure that I have something pre pre prepared for lunch. And then Mm -hmm. when I get off at night, then I'll have dinner, but it's, it's knowing what your, what your body is, what kind of, I worked graveyards for 13 years. So getting up at six, seven, eight in the morning, my, my bio rhythms are not there. I'm, I'm right. completely non-functional that early in the morning. Yeah. So you've got to find out what are your functional times then, because we're talking loosely this nine to five, right? Correct. You know, if it needs to be 10 to six or 11 to, you know, whenever, whatever those designated hours are, because um, that, that boundary really does uh, make a huge difference to the momentum that you're able to build. And then, and that, and because I think too many entrepreneurs make the mistake of not setting that boundary in the beginning because they go into a business for themselves to have a lifestyle that they want, but you get Get the lifestyle after you've built the cash flow, right? When you Correct. build the cash flow, you've got to put effort and work into it and then you can ride it. So mm-hmm. you don't, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing. The four-hour working week, I think, has gotten it, given a lot of people the idea that they can just work for four hours and make lots of money, but a lot of time and effort goes into getting to the point where you can have that four-hour working week, right? Yes, and... Uh, a lot of the, the four hour working week is, I believe in the beginning, and don't quote me because I didn't read the actual full book, is they were working for a corporation and they were spending the time setting up somebody else to do their work. 
Yeah, exactly. So they weren't self-employed when they started the four-hour work week. That was correct. Yeah, and and if you were self-employed, you've got to have enough money to be able to employ people to do that work. So you can't do it as a solopreneur. You've got to build yourself up from yeah. solopreneur to entrepreneur, then for, from a small business to a medium-sized business, and then at that stage, you've got a team that can take over all the work for you. Sure. Um, we'll be talking about that in the retreats that we've got coming up in Phoenix next year in May and in Noosa. Uh, in uh, November, if anybody's interested. So let's get on to why, what What do you mean by increasing the hunger? You've got to increase the hunger. To have these magical money manifestations, we have to increase the hunger um, and what, you know, why and what do you mean by that? So increasing the hunger is, it's kind of twofold. The first fold is if you're already working a nine to five job, if you're in a situation where you're kind of comfortable, but you're not, you're not happy. When I mean increasing the hunger is to really tapping into what is that hunger and giving yourself permission to have more, giving yourself permission to go for more and using that, that desire that you have, that innate desire that you just feel like you want to have more allowing that to expand because that's going to help you lead you where you're meant to be. And it's actually your soul giving you signals on what is more important to you. What is important for your soul mission? Right. Right. So, so spiritual entrepreneurs, my crowd, conscious entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. <laughs> probably about 70% of them have an issue with money. Because let's face it, we all know at some stage the monetary system is going to change and maybe become obsolete. But, I, you know, like I don't see it happening in the next five years. In the meantime, we need money not only to live and thrive, but also to throw at some problems we've got in the world to help others, right? So right. it's here. So let's just mm -hmm. deal with right here right now but too many social uh spiritual entrepreneurs are in the future <laughs> that hasn't happened and might take 20 years to happen and so they go oh money's not important or money money's not the reason why like that doesn't that doesn't um that doesn't fire them up they don't have that in a um, that in a hunger and i know for me the turning point for me was when i i had to adopt the hunger <laughs> I had to adopt the desire because I really didn't have the desire. I had the desire for the outcome and a good lifestyle and I had the desire to help people. But the money thing, I, it was disconnected because of the split brain hemisphere thing that I talk about and you talk about it too from the generational clearing perspective. Yeah. So, so talk a little bit about, you know, for spiritual people, how, how do you get that desire and that hunger when you don't really care that much about money? <laughs> And, and most spiritual entrepreneurs, they have this need to be of service. Yes. And when you have a need to be of service, and I'm, I'm just going to show you an example or give you an example. So let's say you have a need to be of service. Maybe you're, you're excellent at making arts and crafts, and you make this incredible, beautiful gift for a friend for their birthday and you have all of their special colors and you have all of their their you know favorite things in it and you put it in this nice little box and you, you bring it over to their house and you 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 put your hands out and just close your eyes if you're not driving close your eyes imagine putting your hands out and you're giving this gift to your friend and then imagine your friend saying no I don't want any gifts from you. Thank you very much. How does that make you feel? Oh, rejected. Exactly. So when you are giving your gifts to the world, when you are being of service, if you are not allowing somebody to pay you for that, they feel rejected. Mm -hmm. They feel that, Maybe it's not a good exchange. Maybe there's something going on. Why would you give them something for free? Uh, and so when you start looking at this, giving an equal exchange of energy, money is energy, your gifts and services are energy. 
then you can start feeling the the balance. So let's say you're giving this gift to your friend, your gift, your friend takes the gift now and they're all excited and they're lighting up and and they feel so honored and precious. And when you when you can make a person feel honored and precious and you have an exchange of energy, then it balances it out. Right. So what I see with that and what I've learned with that is giving and receiving needs to happen for giving to have truly been given. So if we look at the infinity circle, it's like you give and then you receive. You've got more to give, but that giving has been even more received and and so you come to this this floating sort of infinity thing that happens and that creates momentum that then starts to have the money flow happening so speaking of energy i promise everybody you're gonna do this freaky stuff yes i'll do some (laughs) freaky stuff (laughs) now so (coughs) i'll give you a context to this (coughs) i want i had a cough and it's funny that my cough has just started now And I was doing a session with Lucy. She was, you know, doing some mentoring with her. And um, and I was coughing away. And she says, oh, would you like me to help you with that? And then she just sticks a hand out there into the universal energy of flow, grabs it, turns it into a ball and throws it at me. And then the next thing you know, this huge energy wave passes through me, something shifts, and the cough um the cough subsided so i said to her if we're going to do an interview you you she has to start doing that in her speaking firstly and she has to start doing that and whenever she's doing any webinars or what have you because that's her gift that's her mojo we talk about mojo right Mm -hmm. so uh lucy's going to give you some mojo (laughs) she's i'm going to give you some mojo so what should we focus on though? What 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 should we have an intention? Like we've been talking a lot about a mindset shift. Maybe should we do a ball that's gonna make a mindset shift for people to allow receiving a flow of energy in the form of money? Or you you whatever you download is gonna be perfect. Okay, so I am I'm gonna tap into the group consciousness of everybody that's currently listening to this and the people yep. that are listening to the replay so right. if you the replay this will work so get prepared if you're driving stop well keep your eyes pull on the over. road or stop or pull over um but don't 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 um <laughs> don't, don't 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 be in a situation where you can't listen to this put this on pause if you're if you're in a busy busy intersection all right so i'm going to bring in a, a an energy ball right here oh this is nice it's beautiful and then i'm going to fill it up a little bit more and now i'm going to just toss it like a huge beach ball and just imagine you're catching a beach ball and then I'll bring it into your heart. So you ready? Yes. Okay. So, oh, wow. That just split into a whole bunch of little beach balls. Yeah. Now yeah, yeah, everybody yeah, take your beach ball and then put your left hand over your heart and your right hand over that. And bring it in. Did anybody sense that? Yeah, it, I I did. I mean, I when you started, whenever you start working with energy the way you do, I immediately start buzzing, um, yeah. and I felt it. I felt it land on me. It was just really subtle, like yes. it wasn't this big. Oh, like the first time you did it, it was more of a subtle one. But yes. then I felt, but then I felt the tingling. How about the, the guys that are watching? If you watch this on the replay, do you want to do it again, just so maybe we can get some bit more focus? Yes, yeah, so we have everybody refocus in. And what you're what you're feeling for is a really light sensation. It's almost like a breeze. Yeah, that's exactly what it was like. That was a perfect description. Okay. So I'm I'm going to put this put your hands out and imagine receiving this in your hands. And now bring your hands together over your heart and bring it into your heart to open up your heart so that your heart and your mind will be in congruency so that you will be able to make decisions with love and light and compassion and your throat will speak clearly 
because you now have an agreement between your mind and your heart. Mm. That's really good. If any of you felt something or had a shift occur, we'd love to hear your comments. Um, and you can tag us if you're watching this on the replay. So what does, talk? let's talk a little bit more about energy because we're all energy bunnies, right? Everybody yes. wants to feel good and experience energy, um, highs and the lows sometimes, even though we don't think we do. Um, so how does energy help in the, you know, magical money manifestation? So I guess we're going on to the next topic, which is what is magical money manifestations and, and talk about some energy there too. So magical money manifestations is, oh, thank you, Sue. She felt it. Yeah, Fabulous. she said she felt the breeze. Yeah, I felt it too. Thank you. Um, so magical money manifestations and energy, the way they're they're linked together is the higher, oh, thank you. We yes, felt some job. tingling sensations. Good job. Um, th when we are based in energy, we are energetic beings we are vibrational beings and this is they're finally starting to prove this scientifically where we are able to oh thank you cynthia hi cynthia great to see you when we are raising our vibration when we are clearing the blockages which is the lower vibrations. And I believe Stephen Hawkins created a chart on, on what emotion has what vibration. Yeah, the so when we're doing energy healing, when we're doing energy work, when we're starting to feel good, feel happy, feel joyful, we start raising the vibration. And a lot of individuals, they they look at money and they think money is a low vibration, but money is the highest vibration because it's an exchange of energy. And whether whether we're in the old times, whether we were exchanging grain or gold or silver or pieces of paper that said IOU, what however we determined what that value was that started raising the vibration of whatever that means was. So the vibration of money and the vibration of love is almost the same vibration. Wow. And that makes sense because if you were to go into a five-star hotel, it has a very different vibration from a backpacker's or a three-star hotel. Yes. And like whenever you go into, you know, restaurants where wealthy people are, you can actually feel that it is a high vibration. Correct. That's Correct. interesting. It's just the monetary system in which money passes through isn't very high in consciousness, but the vibration is right. pretty. Is, the the, yeah, the pretty actual pretty vibration of money of itself is a high vibration. And it's only because of our belief system on how it passes through the system. Mm -hmm. And a lot of individuals, they kind of get a little freaked out. And when, when you take the infinity sign, mm -hmm. let's say you have a rubber band in a circle, and that's the circle. You take the rubber band and you twist it like this, it creates the infinity sign. So the infinity is a twisted circle. Money flows in the same direction. It flows in the infinity sign. And it flows in a circle. So does love. Love flows in the infinity side and it flows in a circle. So everything is circular. And sometimes when we get belief systems, which is conking up the, the flow, then that's when you start getting this, this, this feeling that it's going, eh, money comes in, then money stops. The money comes in, the money stops. The money comes in, money stops. And when the money comes in and money stops, Start looking for a belief system where you feel you have to put the brakes on in your Ooh. life. Oh, I'm going to write that down. That's awesome. Yeah. And where do you have? Ha where do you feel you have to put the brakes on? Um, you know, when money comes in, then it stops. I haven't worded that really well, it, but it, that. Yeah, and it, it's not just when money comes in. It's where, where in your life 
in my life, I was always told, oh, Lucy, you're too much. So I would put right. the brakes on my personality. Right. right. Yep. Been and when I that. Put, yeah, when I put the brakes on my personality because I'm being too loud, I'm being too much, I'm being too out there, my money stopped. <laughs> yeah. And, like, I noticed that in my business too because – this last month has been a really big month for me. Like I've probably made almost three times as much as I have for my whatever my medium is all month. So it's been a really bumper month. Mm -hmm. And I noticed I put the brakes on and I just went, oh, wow, this is great. This is awesome. I'm this, uh, this, is, I'm, this is exactly what I wanted. I've reached my financial goals and and now I can kind of like just sit back and relax. And I did put the brakes on in my mind. And then what's happened as a result is that a whole lot of discovery sessions that I had booked up, some people have postponed them and canceled them, right? And that's a reflection of me putting the brakes on in my mind. So, mm -hmm. guys, where are you putting the brakes on? Exactly. So this whole circular thing, it's receiving is part of manifesting. Yes. Like you have to receive what you've got mm -hmm. and then give, you know, because they talk a lot about tithing, rich people tithe, they give 10%. So they're yes. giving and then they receive more and then you give and you receive and you get this thing going and mm -hmm. it's always got to return to you somehow, some way, right? Not always with money. It could return via opportunities. But yeah. but it's circular. That's really awesome. Right. And, and what's really important to be understood here is what you just said is sometimes money is returned in opportunities. And if you have the mindset where you're afraid to take those risks, because you're afraid to invest in yourself, you're afraid to accept those opportunities the money is there basically in a in an etheric bank account waiting for you to accept right right and that can happen because i've had windfalls and you've had you've had a lot of windfalls you're a master yeah. at manifesting windfalls yeah so I'm very good at manifesting windfalls. <laughs> you are. sometimes wow. they can come in a month <laughs> wow so I want to I want to go back to this idea of money and love because most yeah. of us have grown up and certainly talking about the generations, you know, if you've come from a spiritual tribe or, you know, most white people at some stage have come from the Catholic crusades where and this whole idea of money was the root of all evil and that way that the Catholic church could have all of the money, right? Um, and then if you if you've been in a country where you've been invaded by white people and their missionaries have you know given you this idea that money is the root of all evil, and then now some people are saying no, money isn't the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. But you're saying money and love are pretty similar vibrations. So talk to that. Yes. Money and love are pretty similar vibrations, and. It's a lot of individuals, they might have grown up with a twisted belief system because of religions. And a re religions, if you really start looking and digging into the history, and I'm, I'm not going to go too deep into there, you can look it up on your own. But there's, there's a lot of conflicting belief systems on this and that. So when you really just feel into abundance when you really just feel into money it's it's a natural state of being because money is a natural state of abundance and a, abundance is a natural state of being and as an example i have a ruby red grapefruit tree out in my front yard and the first year i was here i got quite a few bushels of baskets and i picked as much as i could and i gave away a lot the second year, I had that doubled. It's as if the wow. more that I picked, the more right. it produced. Right. And so the last time I had my tree was full, I had 14 neighbors come over with garbage bags, with huge containers. Some of them took over 100 fruit a piece. And the tree still had more. Wow, you, you, you need could to take not, photos of that. 
I, I made a video on actually on on all of the abundance because on the outside of the tree you could not see them all, and then when you when you stand underneath the tree and you look up, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of grapefruits. And but money's the same way. Money is the natural part of nature. It's it's just a means of exchange for giving and receiving that we've created because it's a lot easier to give and receive a piece of paper or a piece of plastic than it is to milk the cows, to get the milk, to create the butter, to create the cheese, to create the the textiles to create the iron it, it, it's we it's much easier than what we used to do for an exchange yeah and way easier not quite way, so cumbersome yes yeah, not so yeah, cumbersome, not so cumbersome. So and it opens easy. up the doorway for more prosperity and more abundance because it can be international now rather than just in my little tiny community and what's in my little village so right. money and love is a similar vibration and if you meditate on it and you start looking at money and looking at the beautiful artwork. I mean, the designs of money from around the world. It's colorful. It's beautiful. They have symbolism. They have everything that's mysticism and magic because artists are creative, magical people. Even if you, you do a painting like a Picasso or some artists, they, they take some paint and they splatter it on here and they make this beautiful poetry and they sell it for a hundred thousand dollars. And some individuals look at paper money or coined money. And if you start looking at it as if it's a beautiful masterpiece. Right. Of art. So we can so we can not like the monetary system or, or even love the monetary system into a new system, but money itself, we can look at it as this beautiful piece of art that somebody's had a labor of love to create. Correct. I like that. So you can yes. you're connecting love with money. I um Correct. I remember when I did a um a program called Creating Wealth with Robert Kiyosaki before he moved into his uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad days. And he played a tape by Reverend Ike, which I highly recommend everybody go and have a look at. His name is Reverend Ike. Have you heard of Reverend Ike, Lucy? No, I have not. So Reverend Ike is a Southern Baptist preacher who who is science of mind, and he spoke about manifesting money and everything. And he had this that thing that you say, and and in in the Creating Wealth um, program, we had we listened to him, and then we had to walk around saying this. I love money and money loves me because they were linking money yeah. with love. So should we all say that together? Yeah, I say that all the time. I didn't, I, didn't know, I didn't know that came from Reverend Ike. That came remember. from Reverend Ike, yeah. Yes. Okay. I, love I love money. money I love money and money, love money, and money loves me. Money loves me. So that makes sense. And yes. I always... I always add to and I always use and I only use money as a force for good in the world because I find and, and, and do you find this too when you're working with people that's part, part of the reason why some people keep small amounts of money is because in the back of their mind there's a remembrance where they abuse their power and so there's guilt and so they don't want a lot of money and stop themselves from getting a lot of money in case they abuse their power again. Some of it is in case they abuse their powers. Other cases, it's because of safety, and they're terrified that people will steal from them or murder and kill them because they have too much money. Too much money. I've been through all of those. I've had to do clearing session upon clearing session upon clearing session upon clearing session on all of those. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Awesome. So, guys, if you've got any questions or you want us to address anything that you might be um, coming up against as a sticking point, now's the time to ask it. It takes a few seconds before we see that. Um, <clears throat> so while you're doing that, um, Lucy's going to talk about the 21 Days to Magical Money Manifestations, which is her free gift for you guys today. Uh, take it away, Lucy. So the, the 21 Days to Magical Money Manifestations is little tidbits of information. They're a quick one-minute read of tips on how you can create more magical money manifestations into your life. And you can get that at the link that Nicola just uh, posted up on there. And it you'll get an email a day. 
It will just be a quick one minute read, two minutes at the most if you read very, a little bit slow if you like to take in word by word. And it'll just help you. And the way that it's written is that it has high vibrational words in a sequence. So if you if you read it in order oh. on the first day through the 21st day, it's going to actually start activating dormant energetic pieces in your mind and your body that's going to help you start letting go of old belief systems and old patterns that are holding you stuck. <laughs> Awesome. Oh, that throat of mine. I'm going to <clears throat> I'm gonna do that when I go away on holiday in Bali. Hey, I'm on holiday for this weekend. Um awesome. So guys, there it is there. Wealth in 21 days. Um, <clears throat> so you're gonna be shifting the mindset, shifting the vibration. Um, I think that's really great. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna sign up for that as soon as we go. Um Lucy, you've got a book coming out, right? So on October 24th in America, so that's the 25th for those of us down here in New Zealand and Australia, mm -hmm. um, your m Magical Money Manifestation book comes out. So if people yes. sign up for the free gift, are you also going to then let them know that when they can get your book because it's going to be a special or something on that day? Is that right? Right. On October 21st or 24th, they're going to be able to get the Kindle book of Magical Money Manifestation for only 99 cents yeah wow awesome. the book is also written in a sequence so that it'll activate your dna and your rna for abundance and prosperity right well you need to whatsapp me that um because i'll be in bali on that day i'll be having i uh, think that's it i'm having a spa so if i get a whatsapp reminder i can go and buy that on my phone while i'm away um, so, and, and then people, if people wanted to work with you or talk to you about getting some of that generational clearing, 80% guys, 80% of the reason why you're at where you're at financially is because the generations, um, mm -hmm. if you, and if you feel an affinity with, with Lucy, you've been resonating with what she's saying and you think, oh, maybe she'd be quite cool to work with. Can they sign up for your free gift and then just reply to the email they get sent and, and that goes to you or is it a no reply? They can reply to the email, and then I will get a hold of that, um, get a hold of you within a couple of days. Usually I respond pretty good, but depending on the time shifts, if, right. you, if you send me a message on the weekends, I will not be, I do not yeah. play on my computer on the weekends. Right, because you've got the big bad B word. <laughs> yes, I have the big bad B word in, and I, I take off the weekends for me. But you can respond to that, or you can go to my website if you wanted to check it out and yes. set up a, a clarity session with me to see if you need to get a hold of me for that. Beautiful. So Jan has asked a really good question. Yes. She's got all weather, which is a great way to start a sentence, Sajata. <laughs> Or whether it is generational, can it just be for you but not other family members? So I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Are you saying that, um, I yeah, think like, did, you guys yeah, I think she, somebody wrote a message a little bit before this one. So was oh, that the first part of it? there she goes, that's Sajad as well. How okay. do you, got it, sorry. How do you know if you do have a money block is it a feeling or a knowing or whether it's generational? Got it. Got it. Okay. Got it. Got it. So the, the way you would tell whether or not it's your money block personally is that it just happens to you. And, and right. it doesn't, it's not a pattern. It's not a family pattern that you've been able to detect or notice within your, right. your mother, your father, your brothers, your sisters, etc. So yeah. that's that's a little bit on how you can kind of tell if it's your stuff. And you may have picked it up from somebody else. It might not be a family member. It uh -huh. could have been a school teacher who impressed upon you. Or it could have been a nun if you were in school. Or it could have been a movie that you watched uh -huh. or something that triggered uh, some type of uh, memory inside of you when you were a child where you associated something bad about money 
mm. or something bad about abundance or something bad about receiving. Yeah. And then you've got the whole past life thing, right? So you've got the past yeah. lives of your past you've got the past life lives too. of your generations and then you've got the past lives of you and then you've got, you know, this life as well too. Um I yeah. I know I've got a money block when I feel I'm not getting the result that I want. That's for me it's like if the result doesn't come in the way I wanted it to, there's a block there. And then if I feel like sometimes I actually feel like I'm against that glass ceiling, like I can physically feel the glass ceiling that I'm trying to smash through when I'm looking at going to the next level of abundance um, and I can actually feel it and I just go, oh, I just want to smash through it. Yes. And, and a lot of times when, when you start feeling that pressure when you're getting to the glass ceiling, and, and this is, I'm going to tell you a secret. <laughs> Instead of trying to smash through it, find where it ends and go around it. It's much easier. Much yeah, easier. I heard that. So it's like you find a way to get around the resistance, which is what I do when I'm working with people, um, it, 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 you know, when I'm mentoring them and if we're coming up a big block, obviously we want to deal with the block, but yes. sometimes it's just quicker to just go around it. Awesome. Great talking to you, Lucy. Um, that's just been really awesome. And uh, we've just gone on and on because we could keep going on and on all day really on this subject, couldn't we? Yes, so, guys, if you would like to get Lucy's free gift, go over to wealthin21days.com, sign up for that, and every day do those vibrational buzzing things that are going to increase your wealth mindset. And if you want to get her book, be sure to look at your email on the 24th of October to go and grab that. It'll be on Amazon, right? Amazon Kindle. Yes. And I really highly recommend you actually book in for a session with Lucy on getting some generational clearing done because I know that, like, it's been one of the biggest shifts that I've had. And you know how you said before, I know, uh, how do you know if it's you or it's a family thing? And I I know that in my family, like, I my my on my mother's side, my mother's uh, family part of it was from Prussia before Prussia was uh, invaded and then got split up into Poland, Russia, and, and East Germany. And um, my great 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 grandfather was a baron. So he's a member of the Prussian aristocracy. So when he came over to New Zealand to escape that, he came with this thing about, oh, my goodness, people are going to take your money or you could lose your life because he came just after the Tsar, the last Tsar of Russia, and you know, and his family were lined up shop, right? So yes. he escapes New Zealand. So my whole family have that pattern. Like we all have that pattern of, um, you know, like we're all big spenders. Well, I'm not such a big spender anymore because I'm investing and my, my younger brother's pretty good too. But like, it's like, oh, as soon as we get lots of money, go spend it, you know, because cause somebody else is going to take it away from us. And I think a lot of people have that. Mm -hmm. right? So I know that that's definitely a generational thing. So, yeah. So I really highly recommend that you, you, you absolutely 100% get that generational clearing done. If you choose Lucy, that's great. If you don't, then, you know, find somebody else that you can work with um, and get her free gift. Um Thank you so much, says Sajada. I learned something today about myself. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. It's always Thank good you when too. you learn something about yourself. It's a good day. Yes. Lucy, any last thing you want to leave us with before we sign out? I would like to leave everybody with a blessing. Oh. And I'm, I'm just going to take a moment. I'm going to create a beautiful energy ball, a blessing. And whatever it is that you need the most in this moment, just, just, Think of it as if it's already happened, and we're going to send out the energy right now. And you might feel like a slight kiss on your cheek. There. And you've been kissed by the angels. Ah, oh, thank you. That's great. Thanks, Luce. E, I'm sorry. I know you don't like that. We Aussies are terrible at shortening everything. Thanks, Lucy. Okay, guys, thank you so much for showing up. Those of you who are watching the replay, love it if you've got questions or commenting and tag either Lucy McMonagall or myself and yes. we'll be there to help you out. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Wealthy Wednesday Show. This is your host, Lucy McMonagall. I am the mystic wealth creator. 
a mentor for conscious women entrepreneurs helping them create more freedom in their business through conscious wealth creation. I would love to extend to you a free gift. And all you need to do is go to my website at lucymcmonocle.com. That's L-U-C-I-M-C-M-O-N-A-G-L-E.com to get your free gift. So until next time, abundant blessings.